Welcome back to Tales of Monkey Island, and, um... Uh, Logan, are you okay? You look a little green there. I never liked Spider-Man Part 29. <laughs> How dare ye! What, what part was 29 again? That one. <laughs> that one which we will, no, we will never speak of. I told you, Logan, try to go into the city, try to sell you a used copy of DDR, Megabix or whatever. In this weather is not a good idea. Now we're all gonna die again. Yeah, just to, just to bring Logan up to speed, because he did miss out on it. Basically, when we came over here to Flotsam, the pox that was kind of emanated from our hand, the remnants of it kind of followed us over to Flotsam, because of course it did. And because of the winds, the fl the pox is pretty much trapped on Flotsam, infecting all of the pirates on it. Huh. Boop. Whoa. And yeah, nice. it's a so nice bit of display. We could use that to break open that bottle that we took from the voodoo lady. Because I, I guess, because I guess our our skull isn't thick enough. Also, <laughs> yeah, yeah this guy, also, the guy brush ain't that thick. Yet. Also, the glass blower is not looking too hot himself. Yes, uh, again, all the pirates are infected with the pox. Also, you look closely at his chest. It looks like it looks like the pox is literally bleeding out of him. Great. I'm pretty sure that's plus. Ah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> that was enough to make guy friends sad. <laughs> and also, well, no, that's the, the fact that he, he won't, that well, you broke your fancy schmancy. Yeah, because remember, all of our treasure is currently with our ship, which is currently at the bottom of the ocean. So we're gonna have to find another means of taking that their bottle bricking thingy. But of course, us as Guybrush, we, we have good ways of doing it. The, the most ethically sound ways of getting what we want. Alright. And we're about to and we're about to prove to Elaine why she should have bought us this cannon. Or shouldn't have anyway. Okay. Oh yeah, strong winds. Yep. Don't Oh Not again. again, strong enough to push a cannonball back. Yeah. yeah. But cool, these crosswinds will allow us to maybe get at that. Uh, glass blowing horn of his now that he have to go back inside to get more unicorns. You know, it's probably a blessing in disguise that he actually didn't take the bl the blow horn with him inside. Yeah. Yeah. And look at that! It's just it's just sitting there waiting for a certain freak to take it. Yep. Ours. Mm -hmm. Many of life's problems are solved by indiscriminate cannon. Fire. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we got the bottle, we got the horn. This should be easy. Let's easy, go right? into that sucker. Alright, let's see. Okay, uh, let's nope. Some hey. oh. Oh, oh, that's right. We still uh, need to take care of that ow. pox tan. Yeah, it's not, it's being uncooperative. Control, so, shoot. why don't we go? Why don't we go check on the local doctor? See if he can do anything about it. Uh, the okay, that's right. The Marquis de Sange. De Sange. De Sange. And by happenstance, he's actually in. The doctor is in. If you came here any earlier, he would actually be busy on another patient. But yeah, here he isn't. Oh my god, he is French! <laughs> He's very French. Look at that face paint! And that powdered wig. So why was this the character that you wanted Jordy to meet, absolutely? <laughs> well, this wasn't the character, although, you know, obviously it's, it's clear she's having fun with this character so far, but it's not the, he's not the reason I wanted her to be here. Oh, jeez. Well, he's definitely one of the few highlights of this game, that, from what I remember. Oh, yeah, for sure. I... But yeah, he, and he's definitely enthusiastic about helping us with that hand of ours. So yeah, he is the former, he's the for, former, um, the former physician of King Louis. King Louis! And we're about to learn why he was the, he's currently the former physician. Yeah, because oh. he's, to, he's not totally insane. No, not at all. No, he's just French. Hey, I'd like to just say to all our French viewers, we have nothing against you guys. You all are fantastic. It's just that, you know, stereotypes are, have always been so a thing. A dazzling of course. Like yeah. And don't mind that monkey over there in the cage. That's just um, his pet monkey that he likes to do completely ethical experiments on. Fair. Oh, I was a young physician in the court of King Louis. Those were early days, tending to the many ills of the aristocracy, uh -huh. navigating scandalous palace entries. Mm. <gasps> the rising star in the scientific firmament. Good for you. And then? I mean, then? <laughs> <laughs> and then? Jealous scientist accused me of performing inhumane cross-breeding experiments with the Queen's Well, with oh. I guess he has some resentment. <laughs> 
the king was outraged yeah. and ordered me exiled. So yeah, basically, uh, there's word went about that he basically conducted a lot of really sick experiments. You know, not that that could be proven. He doesn't look that sick. And yeah, basically, he came to Flotsam to do some more studies, and well, the winds kind of have him trapped here. Speaking Fair. of the winds, scientifically speaking, what do you think is the cause of these crazy winds swirling around Flotsam? Ah, uh, yes, the winds. <laughs> Personally, I'm puppy. Rare, but oh, yeah, Lucy's in puppy. Look away. It's a Frenchman. Or a guy that, or a guy that's trying too hard to look French. <laughs> Forget I asked. Forget I asked. <laughs> so, Doc, what's the verdict? I. Oh, Monsieur, you are a very lucky man. We are. I am. Ah, oui. The disease spreading through your saucy little paradise. Also, could be wrong, but does this guy sound familiar at all to you, Hi? That doesn't sound very loud. Um, yeah, that is actually Jared Emerson, a.k.a. the guy that composed all that sweet, sexy music for the Sam and Max games. Oh, nice. Well, actually, he's, he's pretty much done the music for most, if not all, Telltale uh, games. Wait, what now? What? Oh. oh. What the? Oh! Hey! Yeah, to, to properly experiment on our pox hand, he's gonna amputate it. I should have known. Thank goodness, finally, someone <laughs> speaking reason here. <laughs> Yeah, because you were. Just, <laughs> uh, it was either it was you or someone else who suggested we just we just cut off the hand and be done with yes. it. Yes, and finally we have the ma the voice of reason. Go. Oh wait, he numbed it. Wait. Oh, that helps. Yeah. Grog. Yeah, it's a it's a grog based anesthetic. That should, but shouldn't that just straight up have our hand melt? <laughs> you would think, but I guess God, grog suck. has many uses. But hey, that. Yeah. But hey, that it's actually saying we should keep in mind that Grog just knocks it out. For a while. Yeah. But have we forgotten that in the first game that stuff is potent enough to melt through melt and steel cups? Yeah, multiple cups. I feel like it really kind of depends on what brand of Grog that does it. Like, if it's all natural Grog, then yeah, that thing is basically acid. Uh, Guybrush, what the hell happened to your eyes back there? I yeah, I noticed know. that too. I don't Catch know. monkey. Oh. Ooh. Please. Yay, You're monkey. free now. Also, oh. uh -oh. monkey. After I take care of Monsieur Sweepwood, it's back in the box for you. Listen, monkey, you want you some? Uh, together, we'll bust out of this joint. What do you say? Please. Are you with me? You want some papayas? I was gonna say, if you say bananas, I'm gonna slap somebody. <laughs> did you? Uh, well, did you, did well, you... well, get your slapping hand ready because that's pretty much bananas are actually gonna be key for this puzzle here. Did you oh, want? Course. Did you want some trivia about the marquee? Um, me or anyone? Oh, look! I'm, I'm down. Well, I mean, so the marquee de sun, this de sunge or whatever is is a reference. Oh, geez, electricity Whoa. does not like that. His oh, it's his tail. Yes. Yeah. That looked unpleasant. Okay, so let's not do that. Let's see what this other let's one does. does. Let's see. That what... is the banana the... petal. Bananas for oh. heaven. Thanks, banana god. <laughs> You're welcome. Anyway, so <laughs> of course it's DK. Oh, so yeah, and basically, when he eats a banana, that's just gets... the puzzle. That's just just of the puzzle. Well, you have to use those panels to manipulate the monkey. If you feed the banana, he'll pretty much go to whatever's on that projector there. And we also need to use the, the shocking mechanism to affect the environment, Sorry. like for example, Mike knocking down the portrait of our hand there. Okay. I gotta, I gotta uh, say, Tesla should Tesla should have sued. Yeah. But yeah, I was gonna say. So the Marquis de Sade is apparently a reference Ooh, to nice. the Marquis de Sade, which is what sadism was originally referenced oh. back to. Oh. oh. And also, and also, uh, Sange is the French translation for monkey. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, uh, when he refers to how apparently he did some crossbreeding experiments with the Queen's poodles, this is apparently, according to this site, this is a supposedly a possible reference or origin story. To LeChuck's prize piranha poodles. Huh. Oh. So Marquis de Sange had a plate, had a role in that. Okay. Go to the skeleton here. Probably hand. an indirect role. And okay, now he's going to be you know, the skeleton that has the key. Let's hope physics work with us. Don't. It did. Oh, an electromagnetic monkey. I had a dream like that once. What? Only it was an iguana, not a monkey. And instead of a key, it was an ice cream cone. <laughs> Seriously, Tesla should have been given credit at least. He's kind of, yeah, he's, I know. He's kind of he's kind of the one who invented uh, wow. free electricity. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's he, what's he right. all excited about? But now that the monkey has the key, kind of you know, 
attached to his tail here. Maybe he'll give us a hand and actually give us that dark key. That's nice. Awful. All right, give Don't it here. First, gotta feed it a banana. Oh, no, good thing you had this thing as a bottomless gut. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right, give us the key. That's it. Come on, you magnificent magnetic key. Give it good, okay. Come on, I almost, <laughs> almost got it. Gotcha. Now, oh. Well, that'll the work. Key into the lock. How? And How? Do Your wrist. Only fair. I mean, look at Guy Rush. He looks like someone who could contort his body in such weird ways. Oh, hello. Oh, hi. <laughs> You're doing Get back on the table at once. I don't think so. Sorry, Doc, but I can't he's, you keep, sorry, sorry, I keep dropping something on the floor. Contact lens, you know? Don't yeah, that's a, basically... <laughs> basically, you know those issues that Logan had when he was recording Season 1 yeah. of Sam and Max? They kind of popped up here and there. Not as frequently as it did with Sam and Max, but you will notice it now and then. Don't push that thing. Yeah. You didn't know that, but off we go. I don't know, he seemed to like it. And that actually is a joke that Guybrush says. Like, if you use the shock pedal enough times, he'll actually say, I think he actually likes it. <laughs> Pirate Hunter. Morgan LaFly? LaFly. It's LaFay. LaFly, yeah. LaFly. Oh, but yeah, now that we have our hand under control, we can properly use the horn to break open the bottle. Right in front yeah. of this, right in front of the guy that we sold. <laughs> Look what from. I got! Don't. There we go. I don't think he cares anymore. Elaine, here I come. Also, um, how long is this grog? Uh, maybe not. What? Oh. Oh, it's blank. Also, how long is this grog anesthetic going to last? It. Uh, oh, I'm just saying. It'll last up until the end of chapter one, but you'll see how that plays oh, out. Isn't that the guy that, felt that got that got kicked out of Club Forty One earlier? Oh yeah, the one whose leg we accidentally broke. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, this is Hemlock. Hemlock McGee. Do you remember the voodoo lady saying something about a guy named McGee? Oh yeah, McGee. So yeah, this guy actually has something that we need to help us with the winds. Oh. Oh. Talk about adding insult to injury. Ha. Ha. Yeah. Yeah. What? What did happen to your legs anyway? What the heck happened to your legs? You mean, <laughs> aside from some Egypt <laughs> getting a poor old pirate involved in a deadly bar fight? Yeah, aside from that. Yeah, aside from that. Um, yeah. Well, I think I need to just scream oh, out my right. leg or... or no, no, was, no, that was another pirate that screamed my eye. Never mind. Oh. Yeah. He amputated yeah, his legs. Ugh. Well... Well, he amputated one of them after that bar fight. The other one he lost a while ago while he injured himself trying to discover the secret of the winds. Oh, well, at least he's actually trying trying to do something. Or yeah. Tried. It's kind of severe. I, yeah. Sometimes I think that Ponzi kid has it in for me. I'm just gonna look at this and I'm gonna like try and create my own little murder mystery kind of thing. I'm trying to think of who could benefit the most from having the winds all lead to this area. It's Doro. It's been a long time since I've played this, so I I don't remember. Take a wild guess. But you don't. No, no, you know what? I was gonna say, you know what? Keep that mystery intact. It will make the reveal all the more suspenseful. I hope. Absolutely fair. But yeah, basically, he basically, like I said, he was exploring, trying to find out about the winds as well. Apparently with the same scroll that we have. However, the thing is, like we saw, the scroll itself is basically blank. He knows how to read it. Oh, with his other eye? No, it's actually with a with a little peripheral that he happens to have on his person. Oh, jeez. This peripheral. Oh, oh that that's just thing. a red lens. It's the lens of truth. <laughs> oh, you're right. Basically, he found it in a Cracker Jack box. <laughs> now, how do we? Con yeah, let's tell him that we're going after the winds too. I mean, it makes I was sense. I could carry on your yeah, work. we're on the same team. For the whole yeah. Getting your leg hacked yeah. Thing. Uh, fine. Can't use it anymore. Yeah, he, he can't really use it without the scroll itself, which we have. Don't tell him. You know, well, he probably doesn't know it. Is it kind of does it, is it kind of bad that we just took this thing, this guy, this thing straight from this man's armpits? Well, 
Is it any, no, is it any worse than what no. than anything else? Ooh. Uh, I guess more not. sound, more sounds. Oh. Also, I mean, don't worry. This is the don't worry. This is the last time we have to worry about that particular gimmick for this particular um, chapter. And honestly, you don't even need to worry about it when we return to Flotsam in a later episode. Spoiler alert for that. Huh. Oh, okay. I, mean, considering say, that these, I guess considering that these episodes are were like a month apart, I guess they had to make the most of what they had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that being said, I will say the second time we have to do the whole you know noise around the jungle thing, it also mm. has an extra thing we need to keep out for. So remember that weather vane that we got from the uh, Voodoo Lady's hut? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you notice on that map, you'll see, like, a wind cloud puffing as well. Basically, when we get to certain spots on our little quest here, we need to use the weather vane, and you have to pay very close attention to where it's pointing. Alright. Because I'm assuming we're going to use that to follow where the winds are all centering towards. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. This looks yeah, basically. Promising. Yeah, this looks, looks promising. Just a bunch of sand. And trees. Congrats. Yeah, it looks exactly the same as the rest of the sandy jungle. <laughs> Let's see. Pointing mm. upward. Upward. And who? All right, going up. <gasps> oh, I so hope. I guess I could. I'm hoping the camera. So I guess I can. Oh, go ahead. I, I was gonna say. I guess I can ask since I don't believe when we were talking about it. I don't believe you ever really gave out your thoughts on it. Um, what was your first experience like playing Tales, Logan? I uh, played the demo. Ah, uh, well, did you at least have like a nice first impression with the demo when you played it? Yeah, the demo ends as soon as you turn the Chuck human, and it was a decent like plot twist as well as it was nice to hear the voices I come to know from uh, Curse of Monkey Island. However, I did enjoy Curse of Monkey Island's animation. Rat. Well, of course, like that—that too, the aesthetic yeah, is just promising. so charming. That and all the colorful okay. cast of characters, Haggis and so the, far, so good. the the and the. Bandits and the game, all the stuff. I mean, I still, I, I still think the art style could have been a little better, but uh, it, it, the animation for it all did make up for it big time. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and the writing. Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> I see. You know what? Actually, that's also something I think you might appreciate. You know, if we ever get to a point where we watch the uh, Monkey Allen commentaries. Mm. Curious. Curious indeed. Remember that. If we ever get to a part, Jordan, when we watch the Monkey Allen commentaries together, I think you might really like Curse, because Curse, in particular, all of its visuals are completely hand-drawn and animated. Oh, that's cool. Actually, and I think I might have seen, like, one or two, uh, like, video or clips of it with that, and it's really cool. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Whoa, what? what? Yeah, basically, the, the map also said we have to circle around that pedestal a few times. Ah. Hmm. hmm. Looks like the wind gods of Flotsam are pointing that, that way. way. That way. Thank you, wind gods. I think if you examine that uh, thing, that thing there, apparently it's supposed to be a calendar. Oh. It's a calendar. It's a, it's not a real time calendar, but yeah. A Aztec idol. Someone's coming. <gasps> uh oh. Better hide. Uh oh. Wait. Someone's following us. Cool. <laughs> it's the Marquis de Sage. <laughs> oh no. What? But He's been here the longest. This doesn't surprise me at all. To get my hands on Sweetwoods. Yeah, because that's the thing. Like, he mentioned that when he first came onto this island, it was, for all intents and purposes, deserted. So he's been wanting more experiments, and so he found this weird temple that seems to be controlling the wind so he could force patients to come to him. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Break the, uh, break the glass nose. Oh, uh, my nose! <laughs> Looks like I cut off the door's nose to spite its face. Ha. Huh. Well, now oh. we can reach the mechanism. What did I ever do to Sometimes you? Well, no, we can't really go through it, because, again, that thing's just a gate. The actual thing is a good ways away from here. Well, what do we need to take this There's mask thing for? something in there, but I can't tell what it is. You'll see. Basically, it's pretty much proof of what the singe is up to. We'll get into that later. Ah, gotcha. What's this up with? It's me, Guybrush Street Boy, Whitey Pirate. I've got a mission for you, little parrot. Go to the other side of this door and open it from the other side. Cool. And also, yeah, sometimes uh, the po the parrot's audio will kind of mute itself now and then. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, just a little, uh... Technical. little audio oh, hiccup. Bird. What? It's me, Gabber Shreveport, Mighty Pirate. Was that you <laughs> or the parrot? Yet, still that was him. That's me. Oh, jeez, that was perfectly synced up on mine that I thought it was the parrot. <laughs> well, that was the intention. I mean, but yeah, let's see what the Marquis has to say about this happenstance. 
In the next part. In the next part. <laughs> In the next part. Will we ever find out? Join us. Join us next time. By hopefully by the next part, we actually get off this goddamn island. It's starting to stink. Yeah. Sacre bleu. Starting to go a bit crazy.